Number 29. Freight trains can produce only relatively small accelerations and decelerations. What is the final velocity of a freight train that accelerates at a rate of 0.05 meters per second squared for 8 minutes, starting with an initial velocity of 4 meters per second? Okay, so let's just draw a sketch of this. Okay, so we have a little a train here. Oops, wrong button. So we have a little train. So, choo-choo. <laughs> okay, that's as good as the jokes are going to get. So now it is moving and accelerating, right? So it says that um, it's accelerating at a rate of 0 0.05 meters per second squared. So let's write that here. So the acceleration is 0 0.0500 meters per second squared. And it says it, it accelerates at this particular rate for eight minutes. Okay, so this timeline here is going to be eight minutes. So that's my T value. Okay, and it says it starts from an initial velocity of four meters per second. Okay, so I'll consider the beginning case right here, right at the front of the train, let's just call it, doesn't matter, could be to the middle. But the initial velocity is going to be uh, 4.00 meters per second. Okay, and the question is finally asking me, right, what is the final velocity? So when the train reaches this point in yellow. So I wanna, I wanna know what the final velocity is. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do before I think about formulas is I want to look at my units, right? And I notice one problem. I have seconds in the velocity, I have seconds in the acceleration, but I have minutes in time. No good. Okay, they all have to be consistent. So I suggest converting the eight minutes into seconds. That probably would be the easiest way to go about this. So let's do the calculation over here on the left. So we're gonna do eight minutes and convert that into seconds. So let's write down what we're given, eight minutes. The minutes go on the bottom, seconds on the top, 60 seconds, whoop, 60 seconds in one minute. Minutes will cancel. And now just do the math here, right? So this comes out to 48, uh, 480 uh, seconds. Okay, great. So I'm just going to write that on the top here. 480 seconds. All right, now I'm good to go. I noticed that my distance values, the displacements would be a better term here, uh, are both in meters, so that's fine. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to find an equation that relates these variables. Time, acceleration, initial velocity, and final velocity. So take a look at the upper right-hand corner. And it appears to be, if you scroll through all of them, it appears to be the first one would be the best candidate. So let's rewrite that. I'm going to write letter A here. Actually, let me do it beneath. So letter A I'll put on the bottom. So we got the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. So the final velocity is what I'm looking for. The initial velocity, the problem told me, was 4.00. Going to leave the units out just to make everything nice and simple. The acceleration was 480. And the time value. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> whoops. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered in terms of the math, but uh, let's just be consistent here. Uh, the acceleration is 0 0.0500, and then the time value was 480 seconds. Okay, so now let's just plug it into the calculator. So we got 0 0.05 multiplied by 480, and we can take this in pieces, right? So let's just write, so 4.00, Plus, now we're going to add uh, this, these values together. And this number has three sig figs. This number is three sig figs. Let me just go back and check. Yeah, it should. I should place a decimal in there because the eight minutes that they actually gave me, if you go back to the problem, that had three significant figures. All right. So uh, really, if I, I should have right here, okay, I should have made that really 8.00. And then the value of eight here and here should have also been eight. 0 .00. It won't make a difference in terms of the math, but it will make a difference in terms of significant figures, and that may slightly change your answer, depending upon how particular your professor or teacher is. So in any case, when I do this math, coming back, when I do the math there, um, I find a value, I get a value of 24, and I'll put a decimal there, and it should be 24.0 uh, because I need three significant figures. Okay, now when I add these two values together, I'm going to get a value of 28. 
But my answer should be 28.0. Uh, why? Because this uh, this number right here only go, uh, goes out to the hundredths place, and this value goes out to the tenths place. I got to choose the one with the least places, so therefore it only goes out to the tenths. So this will be the value in meters per second. That is the final velocity. Okay. So now uh, let's move forward. Uh, so now let's take a look at uh, letter letter B. All right. So it says. Uh, let me just change the color here. So it says, if the train can slow down, okay, at a rate of 0 0.550 meters per second squared, how long will it take to come to a stop from this velocity? All right, so let's see what's happening. So what I'm going to do here in gold is I'm going to continue out this diagram, okay? And what it's saying, so again, I'm just going to actually erase this question mark now because I do know what my final velocity is. The final velocity should be 28.0 meters per second. And that's the final velocity in reference to the part in black, okay? So uh, now this new, this not new point, but this point now in terms of the gold frame becomes my initial velocity, okay? So in terms of my frame in gold here, that's the initial velocity. It would be the same value, 28.0 meters per second. It also says that if the train can slow down at a rate of 0 0.550 meters per second, what that implies, anytime it's slowing down, that means the acceleration is negative, all right? So when I write my acceleration value here, I'm going to write a negative 0 0.550 meters per second squared because it is slowing down. All right, and now it wants to know how long this is going to take. So I'm looking for my time here. Okay, how long this is going to take to finally come to a stop. So that means at this particular point out here, the final velocity of the frame in gold is going to be zero meters per second. All right, so what I'll do here, just so, just so we don't get too confused, I'm actually just going to erase this and I'm just gonna change the color here, okay, to, to red. So I said at this point, the first part of the problem, right, this was the final velocity and that had a value of 28. 0 0.0 meters per second. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's think of an equation that uh, relates these variables together. The initial velocity, the time, the acceleration, and then the final velocity. And oh wait, uh, it's the same equation again, right? The same one that we used in uh, letter A. So for letter B here, for part B, and we're going to use the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. The final velocity in this problem is zero. The initial is going to be 28.0. The acceleration now is a negative 0 0.550, and I'm looking for the time. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, this is really a subtracted term, right? After I actually distribute the negative. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then uh, add this, I'll be able to add the term a zero point, I'm just combining a step or two here in one, Part. So this whole thing cancels. I'm going to add that to the other side, 550t. And now what's going to happen is I get 0.550t is equal to 28.0. Now I just divide out the 0 0.550. Great. Now divide out the 0 0.550. And now my time becomes so take out your calculator, do 28 divided by 0.55. All right. And the value comes out to be, and we're gonna have three significant figures. So it looks like it comes out to about 50.9 seconds. All right, so that will be the time it takes. So if the train can slow down to, uh, so if the train can slow down at the rate of 0.55 meters per second, it'll take 50.9 uh, seconds, almost a minute to come to a stop. Okay, so now letter C is now asking us, how far will it travel in each case? All right, so I guess what they mean is that there's really two parts of this problem, right? The frame in black, uh, I'm just starting my picture. The frame in black, right, and my frame in gold. So it, it sounds like it wants me to calculate the, the uh, distances or the displacements in each case. So let me first do the case, the first case in black. Right, so this is part C and I'll keep the writing in black. So I need to now find the displacement. So, 
um, what I need to do again is I need to find a relationship between all my variables, right? So we really have a lot of the variables. We know a lot of them. So there's a bunch of formulas we can choose. Um, why don't we choose the why don't we choose the second one? All right, let's use this formula here. All right. So displacement will equal the initial velocity multiplied by time plus half of the acceleration multiplied by time squared. Okay. So the displacement for the part in black is going to be the initial velocity of 4.00 multiplied by my time value, which was 480 seconds, right? Plus one half of my acceleration, uh, which was mentioned in that part of the problem was 0 0.0500. And I'm just running out of space. I'm going to put it right underneath. And now multiplied by my time value squared. So 480 squared. Okay, so I'm going to do this in pieces. I'm going to do the math here first. Okay, so that will be 4 times 480. Works out to be 1920. Okay, now I need to have um, three significant figures. So I'm going to do, uh, I'll do 1920 without the decimal. That makes it three significant figures. And then plus now, let's do the math for the second part. So it's 1 half times 0 0.05 times 480, and that's squared. Okay, so I get a value of 5,760. And again, it looks like I'm gonna have three significant figures, so let's just leave it at that. So 500, uh, excuse me, 5,760. Okay, wonderful. And now to find the displacement, I would just simply add these two together. So take the 1920, and then add the 5,760. So now we get a total of 7,680 without the decimal point. That's in meters, and that would be the final answer with the correct number of significant figures. All right. Oh, so now, part C for the part in gold. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to do the same thing. All right, same formula we can use. We know all the pieces um, to that puzzle. Um, I mean, you could choose a different formula if you like. I'm just seeing if maybe there's a faster way to do it. Um, you know what? In case I made a mistake here, all right, with my time value um, in part B, uh, why don't we choose this formula? All right, number four. Um, reason being is because, again, if I made a mistake in calculating my time, I don't want the mistake to propagate into the, the last step here. All right? So let's write down the equation. So the Final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So what's the final velocity in the gold frame? What's well, 0? So it's just 0 squared. What's the initial velocity? What's well, 28.0? And I realized that, hey, I had, to use, I had to use my answer from part A anyway, right? Because I calculated that. So, all right, I wasn't able to really, I might not be able to minimize my chance of error here, but it's always a good thing to think about. So multiply by two times my acceleration, and they told me that the acceleration is negative um, 0 0.5. Actually, you know what? Just running out of a little space. Let me just condense this a little bit. So it's two times 0 0.550, and that's multiplied then by x. Okay, so let's do some math here. So let's find and by the way, this value here in terms of the acceleration is negative. Okay, so that's a little negative sign above it. So we have, let's take 28 and square it. So that gives us 784. So we got 0 is equal to 784. Uh, now this is going to be minus, right, 2 times 0.55. That's pretty easy math here. So minus uh, one point. One zero because I need three sig figs and that's x. So now simply just add the um, add the x on over so one point one zero to both sides. X that cancels that term so that's one point one zero x is equal to seven hundred and eighty four. And finally now divide out the one point one zero. And this is a long problem, right? So let me write my x value here. X is going to equal 784 divided by uh, 1.1. 1. 1. 
and it comes out to about 713, considering the sig fix. So 713 meters. And I'll just write that up here. So X here in the gold part will be 713 meters. And then the part in black that we just calculated was 7,000, so X. So the X part here was going to be 7,680 meters. Okay, great. Guys, thanks for tuning in. This was a long problem, a lot of steps, a lot to consider. So hopefully you understood it well. And remember, please subscribe. And uh, until next time.